Hi, uh, everybody. I, today, I will now I will continue with the last lecture. Remember, uh, what did we say? Uh, so, for a ring, we defined what is a ring R. Uh, it is with two operations, addition and multiplication. And uh, so, the, what was it? Remember, it's then. Uh, let's review. So, this addition and multiplication are binary operations. This, uh, the first thing that is with the addition with plus sign, it should be an abelian group. Abelian group. Uh, second is that this, uh, this binary operation, of course, and it should be distributed onto addition. So AB plus AC, and also from the left hand side, B plus C times A should be. Uh, B times A times plus C times A. So if these two properties uh, are satisfied, I hope these are the only thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, and also, uh, yeah, one more thing. This uh, multiplication is uh, uh, associative also. A, B, C. So if this is, uh, if these properties hold, then we say that R is a ring. And if AB plus uh, AB is equal to BA, then we say that uh, it's a commutative ring. Ring. And if there is an element, if there is an element one, well, let's denote by one in. Uh, like that, uh, usually it's not other than zero, uh, such that in R, such that uh, uh, x times a times one is equal to one times a, is equal to a for all a. Uh, then we say that this R is, uh, if this is, this is satisfied, this one is the identity, identity, and we say that if this is satisfied, then R is a ring with one. So that's the uh, notation. And uh, if, uh, just like in the group theory, if we have a subset of a ring, and if the subset with the operations, if, uh, if the subset S with the operations from R is a, is a ring, then uh, we say that this is a, a, a subring. Just like a group theory, remember. So in group theory, when you have a group and a subset, a non-empty subset, here it should be non-empty as well, uh, then we say that uh, H is a subgroup if H together with the operation of G uh, is a group itself. Okay, uh, we proved above that, uh, remember, uh, if R is a ring, if R is a ring, and uh, S is a non-empty subset, then S is a subring if and only if uh, these two X minus Y, namely X plus the inverse of Y with respect to uh, addition, this is inside S and also this, uh, it should be closed under multiplication. So remember, group theory says that H is a subgroup, uh, if and only if uh, X times Y inverse is in H for all uh, X, Y in H. So this is, uh, these are the, uh, this is the, the group theory, uh, group theoretic uh, proposition and uh, the proposition we had proved above in the previous lecture it was uh, for the ring theory. Okay, here's an example. So, example is so let's take ring uh, R to be the integers with addition and the multiplication, of course. And uh, if you take S to be n times z, namely you just multiply uh, uh, minus 3n minus 2n minus n, zero, n, two n, etc. So namely, 
factors n times a such that a is an in c. So this is a subset of uh, R and with uh, a subset of uh, R, Z, mm -hmm. so that, uh, and it is a subring. It's a subring, uh, S is a subring. Really. Of R. So it is non empty, and uh, how, let's check it the conditions. If let's take n two elements in S, oh, oops, two elements in S, it should be the multiples of uh, n is any integer greater than one. Let's say n is greater than or equal to one, an integer here. Uh, n times b, suppose they are in S. Uh, then we should look at the difference, and a minus n b, it is n times a minus b, it's a multiple of uh, n, so that, so that it is, by definition, it is in s, and also the product, n times a, n times b, we can write this, n times n a b, it is a multiple of n again, so that this is inside s, so therefore, s is subring. Something. Okay, that is, and uh, this Z S has, although R has an R, R, R has an identity, uh, uh, this S does not have uh, does not have one. Reason one is not inside this ring. Uh, uh, next. Okay, yeah, here it is. Let me, this, this is the first example and the second example. So when you have a subring, uh, the identity of the subring need not be the identity of the bigger ring. So in group theory, if you have a subgroup, then identity of the subgroup is the must be the identity of the bigger group, and here of course for addition identity of uh, addition is zero uh, is common in uh, so zero must be in S and zero in S uh, let's write like the zero of S and the zero of R are the, must be the same are the same, but not the for one in general. So uh, in general, identities, identity of the subring might be different. So let's take R to be the two by two matrices, A, B, C, D, where A, B, C, D are uh, real numbers. So this is a nice example. Uh, let's take S to be that A zero, zero, zero with the uh, such that A is in R, so that uh, you can check that this is, uh, is an exercise, check that S is a subring of, of R. So it's a subset, and with the ma matrix addition and multiplication, it is a, a ring, so that it's a subring. So S is not empty, of course, it is not empty. The reason is that, for example, zero, zero is there, zero, zero is in S or even 100 zero, zero is also in S. Uh, <clears throat> so I will leave this to you that show that this is a subring. Uh, and the identity of, uh, uh, of R two by two matrices is this matrix to one zero zero one. This is, as you know, uh, it, it is not in S, it is not in S, but uh, but uh, this S has a, uh, this S, the subring S uh, has identity, has identity therefore. Identity, namely one S is, is equal to one zero zero zero. So let's check it. So one zero zero zero. If we take an element from S, it, it is in the form of a zero zero. So that is a zero zero. So 
Well, if you multiply from the other side, uh, you still get a zero zero zero. So that uh, so that this identity of S is equal to is equal to this one zero zero zero, and it is not equal to the uh, identity of the bigger ring. So identity of subring, i.e., so that the identity of a subring need not be or may not be the identity of uh, R. So if it exists, of course. So I did this. So here is uh, a definition. So let R be a ring with one with R be a ring with, uh, with one and an element An element uh, X in R is called is called a unit unit uh, if it has a multiplicative inverse. Namely. Uh, there is an y in R uh, such that x times y is one. So this element should be, of course, non-zero. Uh, also, oops, also the front of the side, and y times x should be one. So this uh, we may denote this. We denote uh, this y by X inverse. Okay, uh, that uh, let us denote uh, by U R the that this U R denote the set of uh, units in in R set of units in R. Uh, so since one times one is one, uh, one is a unit, so that one is in UR, so that means UR is never empty. And you can check that it's, um, it can be checked that this is a group So this UR with the multiplication of uh, R is a group. Associativity uh, comes from associativity associativity comes from group from a ring oh, oh by the way it's a binary operation I forgot so it's a binary operation so if x and y's are in UR they are units uh, so that there is an element a such that a times x, x times a is one, and b times uh, y times b, and b times y is, is equal to one. So there is such a, a and b, so that uh, this, uh, all of them are in, uh, so that a, b are also units. Then, uh, then, Let's look at x times y. So let's see whether x times y is in unit is a unit. So if you multiply it by b times a, it is x times uh, y b. So it's, it's, it's associative. I can we can write it like that uh, times a and y b is one x times one times a x one is so one time x times one is x times a and x times one is, uh, x times one, a is one. 
and also b8 times xy if you multiply it from this side uh, so it is b times ax y this is uh, one b times one times y it is by so the, the result is one again so therefore uh, uh, x times y is uh, is also a unit x times y is also a unit in the ring r uh, so that so it is closed under the multiplication and associated is satisfied and the one is in ur as we showed so that one times x is equal to x times one is equal to x or all x in ur even in a bigger uh, set in r it is true and uh, the, if x is a if x is in ur then uh, there is an x there is an element y such that x y times y x is one so that means y is a unit y is unit so that means uh, y is unit so that y is in ur so that uh, every element has an inverse so therefore uh, therefore U R is a group. It's a bit multiplication is a group. Okay. And uh, here is the definition. So let R be a ring uh, and A B R. Uh, non-zero elements non-zero elements and if if a times b is equal to zero then we say that uh, then we say that that a is a left zero divisor And uh, B is a right zero divisor. So if it's commutative, it's just uh, just a divisor. Okay, here's an example. Uh, example. So if you consider uh, Z or rational numbers or real numbers or uh, complex numbers or, or subrings of those, they don't have, uh, do not have zero divisors. Namely, namely if A times, in, in order to show that if it, it does not have a zero divisor, uh, you need to show that if a times b is equal to zero, then a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. So a b is equal to zero is only possible when a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. So, uh, but here's an example that we gave before above. So, uh, so if you take a look at this uh, two by two matrices, as we defined above, then if you look at one zero zero one zero zero sorry and zero one zero zero the result is uh oh, it's the other way around the, the result is uh we want to multiply this way uh, zero one one zero so the result is zero, 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 right? Yes. So that this A uh, is a is a uh, left zero divisor. They are not zero. A is not zero. B is not zero. But A times B is equal to zero. So that uh, A is a left zero divisor. And B is a right zero divisor. Zero divisor in this ring, and uh, 
let's continue with the, our example. Uh, in this group again, and if you take any matrix, if, uh, if, if, you, if you have a two by two matrix or n by n matrix in general, uh, and if the determinant of A is not zero, then uh, as we know in the real numbers, there is a matrix, another matrix P named the A inverse. There is another matrix P such that uh, A times P is equal to B times A, which is identity matrix. Uh, let's do it like that. Identity matrix one zero zero one. So therefore, uh, uh, units uh, uh, units of this ring, units of this ring, are two by two matrices which are uh, which have non-zero determinant. Namely, it is it has a special name. It is GL two R. So it's not special to to uh, in general. Uh, If you have an n by n matrix, let's let's write like this: n by n matrix over real numbers or complex numbers. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's take real numbers. Uh, its units are the matrices of determinant uh, determinant non-zero, non-zero. So, namely, it is the GLNR, the group GLNR. Okay. Next, uh, so uh, as we said, Z uh, integer Z has no zero divisors, Z or rational, uh, rational numbers, complex numbers, or uh, yeah, real numbers. So here's the definition. So let R be a commutative ring. This is an important notion that commutative ring with one, uh, with one, we, R is called an integral domain, integral domain, domain, uh, if, uh, the ring R has no zero divisors. R has no zero divisors. So the, if you take any two non-zero elements, their product is non-zero. So examples. So for example, as, as I said, complex numbers, rational numbers, real numbers, integers, they are, uh, uh, the integral domains. The integral domains. Uh, for example, if you n z or two times z, so if you take this two times z, it's the ring. It's commutative ring. It is commutative ring. Commutative ring, uh, uh, which has no zero divisors. Has no zero divisors. But it is not an integral domain because it has not, it does not have identity. It is not an integral domain. Domain. Uh, so it has, it has no identity. It does no identity. Okay. One uh, multiplicative identity, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. This uh, M N R, uh, uh, when N is greater than two, of course, M N R or M N C uh, is not an integral domain. First of all, it is not competitive. And also, uh, they have zero divisors. 
text. Well, here's an example. A different example. So let's define uh, Z squared of two as, uh, this is just like a polynomials over Z uh, in X, but we write X uh, squared of two for X. So we can write as a set, something like uh, A plus B times squared of two such that A and B are uh, integers. And this is uh, clearly, since A is a real number, B is a real number, and square root of two is a real number, this is a subset of uh, real numbers. It's a subset of real numbers. So that, uh, so if we take any two element, so let's show that it's a subring, let X and Y be two elements in Z square root of three, so that we can write X as A plus B square root of, not square root of three, square root of two. Square root of two. Uh, and the Y to be uh, B, C plus D square root of two. So where A, B, C, D are integers, of course. A, B, C, D are integers. And if you look at this X minus, uh, x minus y, it is a minus c plus b minus d times square root of two. This is the, this is a, a minus c is an integer, b minus d is an integer, so that this is in z square root of two. And if you multiply them, if you multiply them, it is, what do we get? It is uh, A times uh, C plus two times BD plus A times D plus C times B square root of two. So this is an integer, that's an integer. So that this is uh, inside this C square root of two so that it's this uh, subring square root of two is a subring of uh, real numbers. Also it's a subring of complex numbers, of course. Uh, and let's, and uh, since R has no zero divisors, uh, so identity, first of all, this is commutative, commutative, it is commutative, this is commutative. And it has a one, and namely one is, can be written as one plus zero times square root of two is there. So that it has identity. Uh, it is identity. And, uh, Uh, it has no zero divisors, so it is a competitive ring with identity with one, competitive ring with one, and since R has no zero divisors, Z, Z square root of three, as any subset uh, square root of two, has no zero divisors. Well, let's write like the zero divisors. So therefore, this z uh, square root of two is an integral domain. It's an integral domain. Okay. Uh, next, integral domain. But uh, the square root of two is not a unit because if you take any element square root of two times a plus b square root of two, the result is if this is equal to one. Let's see whether there is there, is there an a b such that this is I, this is one. So this product is 
two B plus two uh, B plus A times square root of two. But this tells you that A times square root of two is uh, two is one minus one minus two B, and uh, the left hand side is an uh, so right hand side is an uh, rational number an integer. And in order to get the left hand side an integer, a must be zero. This is, if this is an integer, then a is zero. But uh, if a is zero, if a is zero, then one minus two b is equal to zero has no solution in z. So therefore, uh, square root of two is not a unit. Not a unit in this. Think. Okay. Next. So here is a definition. Next definition. A division ring. A division ring uh, is a ring with one, is a ring with one such that every uh, non zero element is a unit. Zero is not a unit, so that uh, we, we should, we can ask other elements. Every non zero element. Is a unit. Uh, and a field, a field uh, is a division ring, uh, is a commutative division ring. Or more precisely, uh, F plus multiplication is a field. If uh, F plus is an abelian group, F with multiplication is an abelian group, abelian groups. Uh, this F, this is not F, sorry, F except zero. Except zero is an abelian groups. And uh, the and the multiplication distributes on the addition. On to plus. Okay. So let me review. So when we have R with addition and multiplication with two binary operations, then if R this is abelian group. Uh, group and uh, multiplication is uh, uh, it should be associative a b c is equal to a times b c uh, and if it is we may have a times b is equal to b times a or we may have one in the ring and uh, also uh, uh, also, everything is unit, namely for every x and for every a, non zero a, there is a b such that a times b uh, is equal to b times a is equal to one. So, or just, so if these are, if only these two are satisfied, and also addition, uh, distribution, addition uh, distributes. To addition, let me write here. Oops. Also, a times b plus c, blah blah. So, if these conditions are satisfied, it is a ring. And furthermore, if this is satisfied, it is commutative ring. And if a ring has 
identity, then we say that it is a ring with one. And also, if other than uh, if other than this condition, everything is everything else is satisfied. This uh, R is called the division ring, and if everything is satisfied, then it is called uh, it's called the field. Yeah, field is the it should uh, it should satisfy all these properties. Okay, examples of field. So for example, rational numbers are field, real numbers are field, uh, complex numbers are field. And you should check from the book, Marik's textbook, uh, where uh, th there is a, these are fields, there are quaternions, <coughs> they are uh, they they satisfy uh, all properties except that it is not uh, commutative. So this is the division ring, which I will not do that. You should check it yourself. Uh, okay, this is uh, the end of this today's lecture.